Uh, welcome, everybody, uh, to the party of creation. Although I am uh, Icelandic, I would not speak Icelandic right now because there's, this is, of course, uh, multi-culti here at the party. Uh, sagas, the sagas are shit. Uh, started at uh, a column in Kreipa. Uh The Viking side in Iceland, though, are complicated. They are incredibly complicated. And what uh, Grayson has done is like uh, simplify them in such a brilliant way uh, that I've never seen anything like it. Uh, there are not many writers that I can read and I actually laugh out loud when I'm reading them. But he is one of very few that I always laugh when I read uh, his stories. For Kreipa, just thank you for your columns. Thank you all for coming. It's super nice. It's been four years since I first started writing these sagas, recap things. It's nice to finally have this whole thing and for to see all of these people here to laugh at my dumb jokes. <laughs> I was doing this masters at the university here in Old Icelandic, so I had to learn to read Old Icelandic and I was reading the sagas in Old Icelandic. And there would be these um, class discussions about like the Hintla, if she's a Volva, if she is a a giantess and the conversation between her and and all of these types of things and I would think but but like this is very important for the, for the material of the story but can somebody please recognize that she just called her a slut and then tried to set her on fire these are the things that would be going through my mind in class that you can't say in a master's level academic setting and so I had to have some sort of outlet for these things and that's how this sort of became so I'm gonna start with the most famous saga Yav Saga Fully titled, The Saga of Burned Njál, it is considered the absolute zenith of literary brilliance in Iceland's original prose genre. It is basically THE saga. Some particularly stuffy Icelandic writers would have you believe that it, written in the 13th century, and Independent People by Haldor Laxness, written in 1934, are the only real achievements in Icelandic <laughs> literature, and everything before, between, and after has just been pulp. Fuck those guys. <laughs> So, what New York City is to cities, what the Mona Lisa is to paintings, what In-N-Out Burger is to fast food, <laughs> and what Jesus Christ is to prophets, Njál Saga is to the sagas. Now, maybe you realize what it's like to hear people talk about Njál Saga. It's really fucking annoying, isn't it? <laughs> Njál Saga is talked about so often in both scholarship and Icelandic popular culture that it's one of very few sagas to have a cutesy nickname. It's simply Njála, without the word saga, without the word saga at all. Even one of the cutest streets in Reykjavik is called Njálskata. But don't let all this hype and cuteness fool you. The saga is boring and everyone sucks and then dies. <laughs> you cannot, you, you can literally stop here if you want and I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> Just like NYC, Mona Lisa, in and out Jesus, Njála is an exhaustingly overpimped, tediously mediocre pile of what fucking ever. <laughs> None of these things are necessarily bad and each have their merits, but they're no more intrinsically amazing than Osaka, Odd Nerdrum's not safe for work self portrait with a boner, <laughs> Fred Amanje, uh, the flying spaghetti monster, or Lax Daila Saga, or anything, really. Now that we've appropriately deflated Nyaula's ego, we can get to the action, or some of it. The problem is that Nyaula is longer than the devil's dick and has more characters than the average Reykjavik resident's sex life. <laughs> so I can't even dismiss all of the sp subplots with short, sassy asides. I'll do my best, but most of it I'll just skip completely. This is for you. I do it for you. <laughs> so we start with this. So we start with we start this one with some cougar hunter who is after the queen of Norway, <laughs> but she curses him with impotence because he already has a wife. It turns into some kind of weird dowry dispute. He mentions his niece Hatgerda has thieves' eyes, <laughs> and she turns out to be a super shitty person. Big surprise. <laughs> now enter the main characters, Njáll and Gunnar. Njálk is supposed to be some sage lawyer revered for his advice, most of which turns out to be terrible and only exacerbates the feuds. <laughs> and Gunnar is a big, strong, manly dude. They're best bros, even though people think Njálk is basically a homo because he has no beard. <laughs> Gunnar is like, I totes want to bang that thievy eyed bitty Halke. <laughs> and, and even Njálk is like, not cool man, she's already had two husbands killed. <laughs> but Gunnar thinks the third time's the charm or some dumb shit like that and he marries her anyway. <laughs> Hot together, doesn't get along so well with Njáll's wife, Bergthora, and this is where this weird se 
and there is this weird sequence where they each convince random dudes to kill each other's slaves, for which their husbands then have to pay each other back. This makes no fucking sense, but it happens three times in a row. <laughs> Pro tip, even if you have the shittiest, most thievy-eyed skinka of a wife in all of Iceland, <laughs> you do not hit her. <laughs> In her only act of appropriately placed spite, she swears she'll get even. Like ten boring feuds and some bad advice from Njaf later, Gunnar ends up getting exiled but refuses to leave Eisen because it's just too pretty. <laughs> Fair enough. He's then ambushed in his home, and when he asks Hatskerter for some of her hair to use as a bowstring, she basically replies, uh, are you gonna die if I refuse? And he's like, yeah, duh. And so she says, remember that time you hit me? <laughs> Oops, you're dead. And he dies. <laughs> Basically, she flips her hair and keeps eating her cheese while she watches him get mowed down by a bunch of dudes, and she's probably totally into it. <laughs> then she basically disappears from the story, and good riddance, because she's fucking cray. <laughs> <laughs> Njaut's sons come back from Norway with some guy named Kauri, and he marries into their family. They also bring back some unsavory characters who help stir some spice into this giant pot of lame sauce. Four, three or four feuds later, there's a scuffle on the ice involving some new jerks and Scott Payden, one of Nyao's sons, who literally lops the troublemaker's head off him as he's sliding on the ice. It's basically the only cool killing in the entire book, <laughs> but even so, I like, prefer to imagine it happening while he's doing the moonwalk. <laughs> Another feud or two later, Njalt adopts the, guy's dead, the dead guy's son, Hoskildr. Hoskildr becomes the favorite son and grows up to be a great chieftain and scores a hot wife. One of Hoskildr's relatives, Flossi, wants compensation. They take up a giant collection to pay off the murder and Njalt throws in a fancy cloak. But Flossi is insulted that some beardless homo has offered him a unisex <laughs> article of clothing. <laughs> What's next? Gender neutral bathrooms, am I right? <laughs> Naturally, he decides to kill Njaut's family instead. Flossi depends upon Njaut's house with an army of 100 other assholes, and they burn that motherfucker down. He follows the woman, and he allows the women and beardless Njaut to leave first, but Njaut and Bergthora, who's the real hero of this story, if you ask me, refuses to leave their sons. So they're all burned alive, except for Kauri, who escapes along the roof beams so that he can avenge the murders. This sounds all noble and shit, but allow me to remind you that he leaves his own son to die in the fire so he can avenge him, rather than just saving him. There is certainly not a world's best dad mug in Kauri's office. <laughs> anyway, Kauri chases the attackers literally all the way to Scotland and kills them. He even breaks into the feast, the feast hall of the Earl of Orkney to kill a man who is shit-talking now. I guess that's kind of cool, but it doesn't make any of these people any less stupid assholes than they all were. Even Bergthora had all those slaves killed. Eventually, some peace is achieved when Kauri marries into Flossi's family. Don't even ask what happened to Kauri's first wife. Now, fucking finally, is the end of Nyaut Saga. <laughs> <laughs> Morals of the story. Number one, everyone is the worst and will die eventually, including all of you. <laughs> Number two, cheese will not only provide nutrients to prolong your inevitable death, but it is also good. <laughs> Number three, Nyao Saga is not so good. It will also only bring you closer to death, so don't bother. <laughs> okay, so, basically there's many categories of the sagas that exist, and there's the East Lindinga Sugar, which are the early sagas, and they're about the history of Iceland, and they take place in Iceland, and they reference characters that mostly were reliving people during the period of Iceland, and Njal Saga is the only saga of that category.